So get yourself prepared with your pen and your paper. And for the first exercise that you're going to that we're going to do, you're going to need your small sheets of paper. So pieces of paper torn up or post-it notes. So this first exercise that we're going to do is known as the sphere of influence. And a lot of you will have done something similar. I know that on one of your other business planning courses, you've done something very similar in relation to specific work challenges or specific work issues that you've got to think about. This is a broader exercise focusing on exercise in your mind. What we do know about well-being is this, is that we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of things in our mind, lots of things occupying our mental space. Oh, and lots of those things you can do absolutely nothing about. Some of those things happened in the past that are in your mind. Some of those things are things that we're worrying about or things that we're focusing on that happened in the past. Some of those are things that, that we think might happen in the future. So we, we often have imaginary discussions in our head about things. We often worry about things. We often think about things that are to come. We often sort of analyze things that have happened in the past. We ruminate on things. We, things are in our head that frankly, we can't do anything about, but they are concerning us. We're thinking about them. We're worrying about them. We're analyzing them. We're ruminating on them. We might be having imaginary discussions about them in our heads. What we know is that these occupy our head space. We actually can't keep that many things in our head at all. So one of the tricks with well-being is to make sure that what's in our head are things that we can do something about. The trick is to think about what you can actually influence, what you can do something about, and to focus on that and work on that with an absolute passion. And those things that you can't do anything about to remove from your mind. And in the process of removing those things from your mind, it enhances your well-being. So the exercise we're going to do is one that I personally repeat um, every week. And it's a quick 15-minute exercise, and it just helps us to get rid of those things which are draining away our energy. So what I want you to do, what I want you to do is to have a think about, is to get your small sheets of paper um, and to write down all the things that you've been, that you're working on, thinking about working on, thinking about ruminating on that's happened in the past, all the things that are in your head, just one thing per piece of paper. So you'll, have, you'll end up with lots of sheets of paper here. So for example, I'll give you an example with me. I'm sort of, um, you know, I've got a 15 year old son. I have no idea what he's doing now. He's probably at home watching, he's probably downstairs watching television or playing on the Xbox, I don't know. School's going to be uh, here in England, here around the UK. There's going to be further shutdown for school. I'm worried about his, the amount of work he's doing. I'm going to you know, speak to the school about it, but I can't do anything about it now. But that's I'm going to write it down. So I'm going to write down on this sheet of paper. Speak to the so speak to the school about education, about um, about the, the homeschooling that he's doing. Um, so one, what I want you to do is to get your pieces of paper. I want you to write down all the things that are occupying your headspace. The things that you're thinking about doing, planning about doing, have got to do, things that happened in the past, but just one per sheet of paper. So you'll end up with lots of sheets of paper in front of you. So I've got that one there. I've got, um, I've got a major sort of proposal that I've got to do later. I'm writing that down there. Um, so I want you to do this as we speak. So you'll end up with lots of sheets of paper, lots of little bits of paper or sticky notes, post-it notes in front of you with all these things that are going on. Um, so there's a few other things that I've got to do later on. Ooh, a few things that are bothering me. Um, I've got some pretty big decisions to make uh, um, soon. I'm going to write down on, on, on this sheet of paper. Keep going. Keep going. I want you to get everything, all the things that are occupying your headspace, I want you to get on these sheets of paper. So all the things that you're working on, thinking about working on, thinking about, having imaginary discussions about, ruminating on, analyzing, or what about the things you're angry about? Oh, crikey, 
I'm going to write some things that I'm angry about relating to relating to this government. I'm going to write it down. And I'm just laying these out on the desk in front of me. They're not in front of me to, the, to my side, but I want you to lay these out on the floor or on a desk. You know, there's lots of, every time I look at the ceiling, I realize that there's some damp coming in here. So regardless of whether you can do anything about it, I want you to write all these things. So just keep going. Just keep it going. Write down and give you another few minutes. Just to keep going, writing all these things down. I was <laughs> just looking at the notes, very funny. Okay, just keep writing them down. What about things that have happened previously? Things that happened yesterday? Things that are still in your head from, from, from work that you did this morning? One of the challenges with doing these types of sessions in the afternoon is that people have had a whole morning of work. And so there's still some things in their head from work. You would still have some things in your head from work this morning. So write those down. Yeah, I've got some. <laughs> I've got some things that I was supposed to send another client that I haven't got around to doing yet, sadly. So I'm just jot that down because that's in my head. It's been in my head for a while. Fortunately, we got the tax returns done, so that's good. Okay, keep writing them down. I'm just going to give you another minute or so just to write down as many things as possible that are occupying your headspace. So things that you're working on, things that you're thinking about working on, things that you're having imaginary discussions about, ruminating on, analysing, angry about. Sarah told me yesterday that she used to be angry about ad adverts on the telly. <laughs> So Sarah, if you're listening and you're still angry about adverts on the telly, write down those adverts. I did one of these wellbeing gyms just before Christmas and everyone wrote Christmas on it. <laughs> uh, Christmas was just occupying their mind. Okay. I'm just gonna give you another 30 seconds to do that. Well done, Sarah. Don't watch them. Just concentrate on those films of yours. <laughs> okay, what I want you to do now is to lay out these little pieces of paper or post-it notes in front of you. And I want you to have a look at them. Now we call this your sphere of concern. So these are all the things that are occupying your headspace, your sphere of concern. I want you to look at that sphere of concern and just think about how that makes you feel. The trouble is when all these things keep coming into our head, it drains away our energy, it develops stress, it may even develop anxiety. Sometimes they get in the way of us thinking about other things. Because here's the truth. The truth is that you should only really have in your head what you can absolutely do something about. There's no point in having anything in your head in having things in your head that you can't do anything with. So you've got to keep into your head the things that you can do something about. And that's a relatively small number of things. Now, I know it's hard because with some of the things that are deeply emotionally challenging, it's hard to remove them. There are things we can do to help to alleviate them. However, with most of these, most of these things that you would have written down are probably trivial, actually. And you can absolutely remove them from your head to give yourself space to focus with a passion and with a determination on the things that really that you can actually do something about. OK, so what I want you to do now is just to have a have have a think about what things can you do something about today? So immediately we finish this this well-being gym, immediately we finish this session at three o'clock. What can you do something about? So between three o'clock and the rest of today, what can you do something about? Which of these things that you've written down can you actually act on? Of all these sheets of paper, I've got, 
uh, I've got about 20, 20 or 25 sheets of paper here. Which of these can you actually tangibly act on? Not necessarily complete, but tangibly act on. And just stick a dot or a tick on those things that you can actually do something about. So these, this is what we're doing now is creating your sphere of influence, the things that you can do something about. So I can't do anything about homeschooling today. I can't do anything about my son's homeschooling today. I can't do anything about the damp today. I can't do anything about the major proposal that I've got to do. But what I can do something about is the, is the material that I've got to send off to a client that I was supposed to have sent off yesterday that I didn't get around to doing. I can do that today. So I'm just going to give that a tick. So just look at your sphere of concern, work out what you can actually act on and give that a tick. Okay. Now then, what I want you to do is to pick up those bits of paper that don't have a tick. So those pieces of paper that you cannot do anything about today, when this session finishes, pick up those bits of paper that you cannot do anything about. So for me, quite frankly, it's most, it's most of the sheets of paper. And what I want you to do now is to get your bin. And I want you to tear these up these up and throw them away. So the damp, oh, I'm dropping them on the floor. The damp, I'm tearing up, I'm throwing away. Now, if you don't have a bin to hand, so here we go with, with uh, my son's homeschooling. I'm tearing up, I'm just throwing it away. Oh, crikey, I'm gonna have to clear that later. In any case, what some people, you've got to tear them up. Make, <laughs> don't, <laughs> you've got to force yourself to do this. It actually, this is, if it's hard for you to do, it shows it's working. So tear them up, tear them up, tear them up, throw them away. It's important to tear them up. I'll show you why. Because I've got, um, I've got, here's the, um, <laughs> this is the proposal that I've got to do. And I've got to do it really by the end of next week. I'm going to do it next week. This is the proposal. I can't do anything about it now, but it keeps playing in my mind. So here's, the here's what I tend to do. I tend to screw them up, screw them up. This is what people often do, and then throw them away. And then when anyone's, when people aren't looking, they quickly rush and pick them back up again and un unravel them. Go, oh, God, I've got to think about this, I've got to think about this. Okay, so what I want you to do is to actually tear them up, tear them up into little pieces. So that proposal is now torn up. It's torn up completely. I'm tearing it up and I'm throwing it all away. And there's one more thing that I'm going to throw away. Uh, ooh, it's to do with family, but in any case. <laughs> Some of these things make me want to throw them away every day. How do you deal with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Um, no, there's some interesting points being made. This is a really interesting exercise. Um, some people actually do this exercise every day. Some people will repeat this exercise. We've only spent, what, 10 minutes or so on this exercise. Some people do this every day. Um, but we can't keep pushing things away. So this isn't about pushing things away. This is about getting things out of your head. So the proposal that I've got to do, which is a proposal for lots and lots of work, actually, I've really got to do it, is on my plan to do next week. So it's on my plan to do. I'm going to do it next week. But what I'm not going to do is think about it now. Unless thinking about it is useful. If thinking about it is useful, if I'm actually going to spend some time coming up with some new ideas, some ideas that are going to go into this proposal, then that's okay. Keep it into your head, sit down, make a time for it, and actually do that. Come do a bit of a brainstorm, come up with the ideas, log those ideas, ready for the proposal for next week. So this isn't about pushing them away from us so that we keep ignoring them. This is about actually not worrying about it. Interestingly, one of the things that people often say to me is that one of the things that is really causing them anxiety are things that they keep putting off. Well, the best way to deal with that is just simply to do it, to do it there and then. Um, so what you're left with now 
at the thing you can do something about. Well, for me, I don't know anything. Um, and that's good, because what that means is that I can just focus on delivering to you. And then when I've finished, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a debrief session with Sarah and Vanessa. And then after that, I'm going to take the rest of the time off. I'm going to go out and go out for a walk. And then I'm going to watch the football with my son. But I can't really do, give myself fully to that whilst I've got lots of other things in my head. OK. Um, if anyone wants to, hopefully that's of use to you. It's an exercise that some people repeat every week. Some people repeat it every day. I personally repeat it every week. Some people do it every month. Any thoughts or ideas, please share them in the messages. Yeah, good. This is good. It is a cathartic one. And it is shocking how many you can throw away. It, is, it does shock me how many things stay in our mind. It always shocks me. Um, how many things stay in our mind that shouldn't do? The difficulty that I have is that lots of things stay in my mind from the past. So, I'm, so you know, I delivered a webinar to you last Thursday. I'm still thinking about some of the things that I should have said in that webinar this morning. Well, what's the point of that? That happened a week ago. The past is all gone. You've got to move on. You've got to think about the things. Unless you're actually going to learn specifically, <laughs> then, um, then you've got to leave it. And the beauty of this is that not only does it really remove anxiety, not only does it remove worry, but it frees up your mind to be more creative and to work on the things that matter with a passion. Um, and sorry if your floor's all, you know, sorry if your floor's full of paper. Yeah, you do have to, yeah, uh, Laura, that is a really good point. You do have to revisit some of your ticks <laughs> um, and, uh, and, te and tear them up. 